getting right with God, getting closer to God, he'll get closer to you, building a strong relationship with God as a child of God. That you want to resist the devil, you want to submit to God, you want to be humble before God, you want to do what God's telling you to do, and keep getting closer and closer to God, and he'll keep getting closer and closer to you, and you'll be strengthened and just keep improving and growing as a child of God. But that phrase, resist the devil and he will flee from you, is a promise in Scripture. And as a church that goes out and wins people to Christ and is trying to do a great work for the Lord and is, is ready to stand and be separated from the world and really do a great work, you can expect that there is going to be persecution, that the devil is going to attack, that there is going to be a reason to stop people from preaching the word. You see, people have this, this misconception in general about Satan, who he is, and what he does. All too often you hear people thinking, you know, saying, you know, that Satan's down at the bar and convincing people to get drunk and all this other stuff, and you'll find Satan at the casino and you'll find Satan in all these wicked places. You know what? Satan's not hanging out at those places. You know why? Because those people have already been deceived and they're already doing nothing. They're already wasting their life. He doesn't need to keep attacking people and kicking them when they're down. They're already down. They're not fighting. There's no reason to go after people like that. But the reason why people think that way is they just want to blame everything on the devil instead of just facing their sins and getting right with God. Now, it doesn't mean that attacks aren't real from Satan. Of course they're real. But don't blame all of your sin. Oh, the devil made me do it. Okay? We, can't, we, we cannot just, just not acknowledge our, our own responsibility for the actions that we take. Now, we're going to go through some examples. We're going to see how Satan does withstand people. And Satan does talk in people's ears. And Satan does get people to sin against God. That is a reality. But we still can't just blame him. I mean, you go all the way back to the Garden of Eden. What happens? Satan tempts Eve and lies to her and gets her to sin against God. And then Eve gets Adam to sin against God. And what do people do? They start blaming everybody else. Oh, well, I mean, and it wasn't me. You know, Eve, the woman that you gave me, she's the one that, that caused me to eat. I mean, you, you gave her to me, God. I, I mean... She's the one that made me do this. And then she's just like, well, I mean, the serpent, he, you know, he was here in the garden. He told me to, to do that. You know, so you kind of pass the buck. But you know what? They all get punished for it. Yeah, that's right. they, they, they all have their own responsibility. So um, attacks from the devil are going to be real. We need one way we're going to have to resist the devil is understand who he's attacking, why he's attacking, what he does. And we're going to go through a lot of different things. But the, the main focus, what I don't want you to lose sight of is, you have to resist the devil, and if you do, he will flee. It's not something that is going to be just continuing and continuing and just not stopping. Because the devil has limited resources. The devil is not God. Satan is not omnipresent. He is not able to attack everybody at the same time. So the devil is going to strategically try to attack people, and strategically try to attack people who are weak. All the more reason to remember, resist the devil, because if you're feeling weak, if you're weak in a certain area, you have to try to muster the strength to resist so that you don't fall to the temptation that maybe Satan's trying to attack you with, to get you out of the fight.